So Jennifer, should I give it a start? Yes, Thomas, you're all yours. Take That's it away. Very good. Good morning, everyone. A nice Brussels morning, as always, with a lot of rain and a lot of work. Uh, we are very happy to partner again with uh, ALDE. Uh, my name is Thomas Ilka. I'm the regional director of the Friedrich Norman Foundation for Europe, uh, so to speak. And uh, we give a start to the German EU Council presidency and want to dive in uh, to shed a light on the liberal expectations. There is a lot of, at stake, of course. We are at the crossroads again in Europe. We have the uh, money and recovery issue. We have the rule of law issue. We have Europe and its borders, migration, Europe as a soft power vis-a-vis uh, -vis China and the US. Um, so a lot uh, to discuss about. And uh, we as a foundation active in uh, 60 countries worldwide advocating freedom and liberal ideas and innovation are very happy to be a part of that. We do uh, on our uh, website a series of articles, a series of events, let's say uh, a campaign. And uh, we are very happy to have a start today with uh, two distinguished people um, of the Brussels and worldwide liberal bubble, if you like, um, Jennifer Baker and of course, Nicola uh, Beer our friend, Vice President of the European Parliament. And uh, Jennifer Baker, you will uh, take over in a couple of seconds to pull all liberal ideas out of Nicola with regard to um, our issue today, the liberal, uh, the, 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 uh, I'm sorry, the uh, German EU Council presidency. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, all you on the screens. I think it uh, will be an incredible hour. Uh, Jennifer and Nicola, the floor is yours. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Thomas, and thanks for organizing this. I think you've, you've set up quite a challenge to us to try and encompass all liberal ideas in just one hour. There's no way we're going to get all of that done, but uh, we will certainly give it a good try. Uh, Nicola, thank you so much as well for being here and for doing this. Now, I would like to uh, say to, to the attendees, um, I hope you can all see and hear us perfectly well. Um, if you want to ask questions while we're having the conversation, please use the Q&A box. Um, I'm sure we're all very familiar with Zoom at this point, but it's uh, down there at the bottom of your screen, there's a little icon saying Q&A, and you can just type it in there. And we will try to, to group them together if there's too many, and we'll try to get round to all of them. But Nicola, first, let's start. It's because of the German presidency that we're having this conversation. What does it mean at this point in time that it's Germany rather than any other country taking over? I think it's, it's, there are really challenging times. Um, this is, uh, of course, because of the pandemic, uh, of the crisis of the COVID-19, but I think that this crisis um, is also uh, a point which reveals uh, in which uh, complicated and challenging time Europe was also before. Uh, so it's detecting uh, uh, weak um, points, uh, for example, in our institutions, uh, in the question how we share competences or how, where, for example, uh, Europe doesn't have the right competences, as we saw that we are not coordinating enough, for example, in the pandemic with the health sectors. Um, and so uh, I think uh, everybody is looking now um, to where it's uh, Berlin towards the German government, how they are reacting. Because we've seen in the last years that there was not really a European uh, strategy um, in, the, in the chancellery um, of Germany. So that uh, Angela Merkel uh, is uh, quite uh, important uh, and uh, person in, in Europe, but she didn't really take took, uh, steps to, uh, to uh, foster Europe. Uh, she, she doesn't seem to have a plan, a vision of the future of Europe. And so I think everybody is now looking on this presidency of Germany and it's in a really important point, a time um, to go ahead. And we are all looking and having expectations 
uh, on which fields you have to go um, forward uh, present to present their plans and uh, also to bring people together because we saw not only in the pandemic also before that um, the countries are quite divided in Europe for the moment. I mean, isn't there an argument that, of course, with this current crisis and this pandemic, uh, leaders should focus first on their own countries to try and sort it out. And people do look to Germany as being relatively successful in Europe at managing the outbreak. No, I don't. Uh, I don't think so. We also saw that um, that the member states couldn't handle with all the questions. And I mean, uh, a virus uh, doesn't respect frontiers, member states' competences. Uh, and so we, in my opinion, we came really relatively chaotic in this pandemic. Uh, we saw something I never expected, um, that the frontiers uh, were shot uh, within, uh, we could say, within some hours. Um, there was no coordination uh, and uh, everybody tried to handle with the crisis, but I think uh, in a coordinated manner and also in informing, uh, in helping each other, we would get uh, earlier in a better situation. Now it seems that every country and also European Union is quite at ease. Uh, I mean, we will have a really critical crisis uh, for our enterprises, for the job market, and we will have to work on that. But I, I think we could have done better if we were in a better uh, situation, Europe and their member states to work together. Okay. Now Obviously, before this crisis happened, Germany had been preparing for quite some time for this EU presidency and had its priorities and so on mapped out. What difference do you think it's going to make that we've got this, uh, this sort of thinking on your feet situation that, that, you know, maybe old priorities are being shifted? Is that the right way to approach it? Or is now the time to reflect and say, we have a new opportunity because of the crisis to try and leverage it, if you like, and, and, and get some good out of this terrible situation? No, I really, um, con I'm really convinced that this is now the, the point where we have to look how we can get come better out, stronger out of the crisis and take this opportunity, uh, especially because we, are, we see now um, that all the problems we were not tackling before um, is also the reason for some of the member states being hit, hit harder than others. I mean, you mentioned Germany, of course, um, we had a consolidation of our budget. Uh, we had these um, often critic, uh, very um, often criticized um, strategy of black uh, zero, so that the, the budget is really uh, balanced out and that we want to pay back debts, uh, also in, in um, uh, taking into account the next generations and responsibility to, towards the next generations. But this was the reason why Germany could handle easier recovery package because the, the financial situation was really stable. We see that member states which didn't reform um, their job market, their social security system, uh, which didn't consolidate their budget were hit a lot, a lot harder because she couldn't, uh, they, they, they uh, were not able to take uh, such money uh, to to help people uh, in their in their countries, and so I think it's really an opportunity um, to see where we have, are not strong enough, um, which um, level, so European level or member state level or even the regional level can act um, the best, uh, and how we can coordinate in those matters where a single member state is not able to get the best result. And I really am pleading for. Uh, taking this opportunity. So yes, we have uh, uh, on the one hand to work with the current, the actual problem, especially for the recovery, but also in other fields that we, I think we will um, speak about it in this hour of discussion. But on the other hand, we really have to think about our own reform. So modernization of European Union as an institution of the treaties, uh, and of the working process because we are quite too slow and too uncoordinated. Okay, well, let's talk about uh, the, you, you, the recovery fund and what you want to see from it. Um, how do you deliver on this recovery package while at the same time aiming for inclusive economic growth? 
um, we we have to aim for inclusive inclusive um, and uh, also a modern growth. So um, this is really important. But then we have to change plans for the recovery package. Um, I really um, thinking that uh, we have to change a lot because um, this um, package. Um, can also have the situation that next generation EU only means that the next generation in European Union is paying back the debt if we are not investing on the right points. And this, in my opinion, is important that we really fostering with this package now innovation grows um, in respect also of the Green Deal and digitalization. Uh, but this has to be a growth for the future. So we have to invest in future projects. Um, all where we are giving the money has to be future proof. And I think it would be better to have much more money spent directly in projects uh, within the member states than giving all the money to the member states, to their national budgets, and then having decided in the member states because I saw that in the past, um, this was the reason why um, structural reforms, for example, were not taken. Uh, and I see now that the European level can control them, um, that the money is really spent for future generations. And so I really leading for having more modernization, more reforms, more future fostered uh, with this money. Okay, thank you. Um, now, I just want to address the attendees again. I see a lot of you are trying to put questions in the chat function, which is not where I can even see them. Uh, I can just see them out of the corner of my eye. So we do want to get Nicola to address these questions. Please use the Q&A function. There's a little icon at the bottom of the video screen. It's down to your right as you look at the screen. If you click on that, it will open up a window where you can type in all your questions. And I know Nicola would like to answer as many as possible. Uh, so I will take one now. We have a, a question in from Eike Weber, who has asked uh, if you could address the question of economic recovery with respect to the needs of the climate issue and possible decarbonization of industry, renewable energy, and innovative industries that will, will help sort of drive this, this green idea as well. How, how do you think uh, that should function? Shouldn't we use the post-crisis recovery to establish green hydrogen production, she says? Um, Give us your thoughts on that. Yes, yeah. this is one important point. Um, hydrogen has a lot of potential. Uh, we are not strong enough for the moment. And this is one of those new technologies. I mean, it's not so quite new, but it's quite new that we have a strategic on this, uh, which we should support um, also with these money. Uh, but let me just take this special point to say it's really important that we are going uh, for innovation. So um, it's really important that the programs we now um, uh, have with this money are technology open, uh, which means that politicians don't um, decide, okay, it's only this technology or that technology, and then there are subsidies in, but that uh, really we um, are supporting our scientists, universities, um, scientist agencies, also um, the entrepreneurs, which are uh, um, spending also private money uh, in research and development of new ideas, of uh, new technologies, of innovations, and then uh, giving um, those new ideas a chance. Um, hydrogen is a big, has a big potential, but there may be also other things. And so I think this is all, uh, important um, to foster um, the green changes in our economy, uh, but um, not to focus only on one of the technologies, but uh, being open to the best results. So politicians should set out the, the goal. Uh, they should out, uh, set, they should set out uh, what is the, the aim we have in emissions, in decarbonization, uh, but then we should really um, focus on the best uh, way to come there, and this is by research and development. Okay, well, Steve Comers asked uh, a very practical question. He says he agrees that the recovery fund should directly finance projects, but can we get the member states to agree to this? I mean, we've, we've got, I mean, as I say, we're, we're at the point of, of the new German presidency. Will that help or hinder? <laughs> Um, I hope uh, it will help, uh, but um, this really depends on how Angela Merkel as Chancellor or the other 
uh, ministers uh, will moderate and uh, bring into the the the, the, the councils and uh, will bring together people. Uh, I hope um, that we can get at the end a common vision uh, for the future of Europe. I mean, this is not a vision about 24 or 27. This should be a vision of 2040, 2050. Uh, and then it is uh, important then to mark the milestones we want to reach all together. And I'm really hoping um, that also the member states see, for example, in research and development, um, that it's not the same strength we have if there are 27 different small budget on it, budgets on it, but that we have to bundle our resources. We have to bundle to be stronger. We have to bundle to be more attractive, for example, also for foreign um, scientists to come in and to say, to say, yes, Europe, that's the place to be. Um, there is really going forward and there we want to be together with all these the creative uh, heads we saw. Uh, and so um, it is really important to come together on these parts because if we see how our competitors are acting in China, in the US, um, um, you see the, the enormous volume um, for, of money, uh, which is really bundled and used targeting um, for, the, for, 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 um, for example, in research. Uh, and I think uh, it's better to go in, in common in, on this point than to have this shared uh, trace uh, all over the continent. Well, speaking of the budget, Sebastian Martin asks whether you expect the multi-annual financial framework to be agreed quickly. Do you want to uh, maybe, I know it's a, it's a hypothetical, how fast do you think that agreement is going to come? And do you think there will be any changes made to the proposals from the Commission? Um, I mean, this is really um, difficult because we see how um, different is the view of the member states. I mean, you have those uh, frugal poor states uh, on the one hand, and you have the more southern European countries on the other hand, and also a special view on it from the um, eastern countries. Um, but I hope um, that if we manage to put out really a common aim, a common goal on that, and if we can show um, how really to foster growth, which is is inclusive growth in every member state. And that reforms are not against the member states, but that they this is a solid base of growth, which creates jobs, which creates wealth, uh, especially um, in, 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 in all the member states, um, that this is possible also to have changes. Uh, but then I think we really have to, um, to fulfill also the promises which are given now with this recovery package. Uh, I make an example. Um, there is a key uh, how the money should go to the member states. And uh, Ursula von der Leyen, as president of the commission, is always saying, yes, this is for the countries especially which, are headed, uh, which were headed harder uh, than other countries. But uh, if you see the key, this is not, uh, this is not true. Um, the numbers that which are used are um, before the corona time. So, for example, the decrease in economic uh, growth, um, the problems in the health system, um, the rate of infections of COVID-19 are not taken in account. And I think we have to change this. Uh, if not, this will only be a new package, but a bigger package, uh, which distributes money all over Europe, but it will not be really helping those who have to recover more than other states. Okay, now I'm going to uh, uh, try and get on to healthcare questions. I'm seeing a lot come in on that, also about the global dimensions of Europe's role in the world. Um, but first, mm -hmm. Charles has asked, do you think the EU needs to move to a more US style federal structure with a more balanced sharing of power between member states and the European government? That's a, a fairly wide question. Yes, and this um, should be um, one of the questions we want to discuss in the conference of the future of Europe. An important point which should not be um, taken apart or postponed by this German presidency. Um, you remember maybe that this was one of the results um, of the negotiation on the top jobs that we want to install this normally should have been started on the 9th of um, uh, on the 9th of May 
Um, so the big European day, we wanted to start with discussion, also taking into account civil organizations, citizens all over Europe. And now it's postponed because of the pandemic. I think that is responsibility of German presidency to start this, at least in autumn, uh, because we really see now um, in the pandemic where we have our weak points in Europe's structure. And one of these points is that in the competences, we have not um, a good balance on it. We saw it, for example, in the health questions, um, that we have to um, have to have more coordination um, on the European level. This does not mean that we will run hospitals or that we will um, have the uh, education for med uh, for for doctors or nurses. Uh, but it's clear that we have to coordinate it to be um, um, stronger in prevention and also to be pre better prepared. Uh, for a next pandemic or a next crisis, because I mean, this is one of the lessons learned. It's not the first crisis, it will not be the last one. And so we should be prepared better uh, also in the civil protection um, uh, branch. And so I'm really hoping on these conference of future of Europe, because we have to discuss this. Um, we have to have the courage um, also not only to discuss within the treaties, but also to discuss the treaties themselves. And this will take time. This will take also um, to convince, convince people uh, that this is the right way for Europe. Uh, we're also getting questions in from our Facebook Live channel. And Sarah Garrido has asked, after suffering the consequences of a bad and late management of some countries during the COVID-19 crisis, is the EU thinking about creating a cooperative institution or plan of scientific investigations and conclusions in order to prevent a, a possible second wave? Um, yes, we um, tr um, try um, to foster civil protection mechanism. Uh, I mean, for these rescue, uh, rescue EU uh, fund, um, there is now uh, more money foreseen, but I think we have also to foster uh, the competences so that, for example, we have common stand standards. Um, that we um, have, uh, we are collecting together all the data uh, about those situations so that we are informed um, all together and can um, also have then uh, better actions because the information level is higher uh, and is stronger with these data. Um, as well, we tried to um, foster um, European medicine agency um, so that, um, for example, um, new medicine, new vaccines can come out um, quicker. And I think there we can already see um, that we become better. Uh, if you see that now the vaccines are um, on the level of being uh, maybe um, in February, March uh, of next year already on the market, and if you see how quick now all the testing uh, is done, um, you see that we really were quicker now than we were in the past years. Uh, normally, such a vaccine uh, takes uh, years and years um, of development. And now we could foster um, this development and we could um, get quicker. And I think this is a really important result um, out of the current situation, which we should then um, also use for changing the structure um, because um, it's not only needed for COVID-19. I think um, this development um, should be used also then for further development of medicine, vaccines, and other um, pharmaceuticals, which helps people. I mean, and you've thought on, on something, uh, as, as one of our attendees has mentioned, the Common European Health Data Space, which is a focus uh, in the programme of the German Council Presidency. These are, these, it is this sort of instrument that you're talking about? Yes, um, uh, this is one of the examples, um, but we already also started. I mean, we have to underline these uh, in the in the um, in the budget of the next um, in the MFF of the next seven years. Um, we have to take um, first steps also in the recovery fund, uh, and so it's important um, really to see how we can um, support uh, and, 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 and optimize uh, coordination uh, on this European level. A couple of other questions now that we're seeing is, uh, 
dealing with Europe's place in the world or the EU's place in the world. Uh, Irina von Wies, who's a former MEP, asked, how will the Germany use the presidency to ensure that European cooperation in environment, security, as well as public health, and I guess everything else, will continue to include the UK? Because, you know, a year ago, we would not have thought that Brexit would not still be dominating the headlines, but here we are. And I think people have maybe forgotten it. So can we deal with that a little bit? Yes, ma'am, but this is a really um, difficult topic. Uh, I mean, you're totally right. I also never thought that uh, we, that Great Britain would get out of European Union. But for me, it's clear uh, it is uh, an integral part of Europe. So this is a European country and we should have, um, have uh, as close relationship to um, the United Kingdom as possible. But to be honest, for the moment, the negotiation on this um, relationship um, is quite hard. Uh, it's stocking, it's blocked. Uh, and we see that um, Boris Johnson uh, wants to go behind um, the results of the negotiation we had already with the withdrawal agreement and the political um, uh, um, paper, which uh, went along with F. Um, so um, they really uh, doesn't want to have same standards, regulations, um, to accept that um, if they want to use the uh, advantages of the common market, uh, they have also to accept the rules of the common market. And this puts really um, difficulties at the bottom um, um, of the um, construction of European Union and everybody who wants to deal and to come in in the common market. And so I hope really um, that the German presidency by their diplomatic uh, efforts can de-block um, this situation uh, because we have all, there are only four months left for um, a result on a further agreement. And um, I mean, this is a really short time in international politics. Normally it takes uh, more time. Uh, but maybe um, we uh, are in a so special situation that it is possible. And I'm really hoping that the um, close ties we normally have to the UK uh, can be kept uh, really as close ties. Uh, and this is also a people's business. So maybe um, Mrs. Merkel will find a quite elegant way uh, to moderate and to bring together Boris Johnson and European Union. Okay, we're looking with the um, further afield then. What will be the EU's action globally under the presidency? I think first, um, an important point is um, that European Union is realizing that it is a global player, or that it should be, I have to say, it should be a global player. Because for the moment we see this is one of the um, topics where, it, where we are really too slow, not united. And this uh, at the end uh, as a result is that we are not a strong voice for peace, um, for human rights um, uh, all over the world. And uh, I mean, this is in the core of our values. Um, and so I think we have to be better, we have to be stronger and we have to be more united on this point. Um, this is one of the questions, for example, where we want to foster European Union so that it gets a really uh, a foreign minister, not only a high representative, uh, because for the moment we see we have the high representative who is speaking out sometimes. Um, and on the other hand, we have 27 member states um, also with their position, often um, different position. And this makes that we are not really on um, as a global player in the game. And this is not only important because we want to be stronger, but I think it's important because this is also a competition of systems. We coming along with market-driven economy, with uh, rule of law, with democracy, uh, and this is really a totally old, um, uh, other system as, for example, our competitor uh, in, in China. Uh, and they are very strategically um, taking their interest in account with a lot of money, uh, with a military demission, which is growing, 
And so we don't have a lot of time to wait. Uh, we have to change on this situation. We have to speak out clearly, for example, in the current situation in Hong Kong. Um, it's not possible um, to only say, oh, yes, um, it's really hard. No, we have to react. We have to take consequences. For example, the council, uh, which is now the EU-China council, which is now only postponed by German presidency, has to be cancelled. Uh, we have to give uh, um, uh, white visas uh, for those people are from Hong Kong to be able to come here to live with us, to work with us um, when they are threatened in Hong Kong by the Chinese government. Uh, so this reaction I want from European Union and I really uh, are calling for the German presidency to work on this. Well, you mentioned there obviously the, 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 the sort of global context of China. Um, looking the other direction, um, we've seen the US very much pursuing this America first strategy into coping mm. with the, the crisis. I mean, where lies the EU's soft power in, in, in dealing with, with countries like that? Um, it shows um, that we cannot always rely uh, on our um, Atlantic partner um, to, to make the job for us. I mean, um, the U.S. is now under the Trump administration concentrating more on their own interest, uh, especially internal interest. It's going back from its role on uh, from its global role in the different regions um, of the world. And I think we have to fill up this um, gap. Uh, if not, this will be China. This will be Russia. This will um, countries. There will be countries also from the Near East. Um, to take the opportunity. And this is a part of these competition of systems I mentioned. Uh, so I want to get up there of power as European Union with its democracies, with rule of law, uh, with its defending of human and citizens' rights, uh, and don't want to come up other powers uh, which are not on these um, value-based um, contexts. And so uh, it's really important to speed up now um, this means um, to work together, not only in foreign affairs, but also in all the part of security and defense, um, to take common actions in all the work we have with third countries in development, um, because uh, for me, this is a triangle, diplomatic development and also um, defense and security. Um, we have to take all the instruments in this triangle to use uh, for a coherent strategy. And um, this is really important now also to invest uh, in these part of politics. Um, so, for example, to be a stronger partner in the NATO. Uh, so because we see that the U.S. Uh, will go back uh, with their uh, uh, forces. And uh, then we have to grow, really, we have to grow up now. Uh, uh, and as an adult um, force, and not only to focus on these soft powers uh, in the past. Well, somewhat related to this, Jelgo Grunfeld has asked how Germany is going to deal with the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, as it has been the target of US sanctions as well as EU scrutiny. Yes. Um, and, and with the presidency, you know, people will look even closer at it. I mean, there for the Nord Stream 2 uh, topic, um, Germany is part of the problem. Um, this was uh, really um, a point where we didn't um, do well because I would have wished that um, such, such, such decisions uh, are being taken uh, in uh, European coordination. Um, this is uh, the Nord Stream 2 question um, has the danger of dependency from Russia. Uh, and we also uh, confronted our partners in the European Union and also in the NATO, especially in the Baltic Sea, uh, but also in the North, uh, Denmark and the other um, Scandinavian countries. Uh, so this was a point where I called the uh, German government for more cooperation, coordination and common decisions uh, on the European level. And it was a pity with, that we didn't see that. Now, we just have the reaction. I mean, uh, it's clear that European Union has to push back um, the ideas of the, um, of the US um, that a project which is in uh, in um, common with the with the rules um, has to be sanctioned. 
Uh, but uh, in the same time, we see that the danger is there for dependencies uh, and um, we have to tackle with this problem. Um, so um, a quite difficult situation, especially for German presidency. This could one be a, one of the points where it hinders uh, uh, and progress uh, on this um, because we are in the core of the problem where we accept as Germans. Well, um, I want to, you mentioned several times in your in your responses, democracy. Um, there is a sort of narrative now that democracy is broken, that uh, we have tweets defining policy, that people are being um, manipulated in how they vote. Um, there's a big presidential election this year. What should the EU do about tackling this fundamental? What we see is, as, you know, concerns about break da breaking down democracy and democratic uh, rules. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, this is really um, a very important question uh, and, and topic to deal with it. Uh, and it has so much um, different levels um, to deal with it. I mean, it starts, as you said, with some of tweets uh, uh, making politics, uh, but uh, coming along with a lot of fake news. So first problem we have is this information um, campaign, is this information campaigning. Um, so we have to be stronger on that. Uh, I'm quite uh, happy that European Union started already uh, taking action, but I think we have to become stronger. Uh, we saw that those disinformation campaigns also um, find, find um, at um, people in, 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 in Europe, for example, when you see um, the situation uh, that Italian people really thought that Chinese uh, government will uh, have helped them, uh, and Europe that did nothing. I mean, we reacted uh, in, in politics, but we didn't make um, pictures from it. And the other had the campaign with the pictures of the aircraft uh, coming up uh, with masks um, to help people in Europe because Europe, so their narrative is not able to coordinate and to do so. Um, this was wrong because there was help also from European level and from other member states. Um, but of course, this, in, this information worked uh, on the ground and is uh, then influencing people in acting, uh, in thinking uh, um, uh, in, 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 in the future or, for example, in elections. And so I think it's important to see that this world of communication, um, we have to give in good and valued, um, valid information and we have to work on this. And the next is we have to foster the dialogue of human rights, of citizen rights, on democracy. Um, we have to foster the, the dialogue how an inclusive um, society can be built up without that people think that is a threat for them because they are living in another way. Uh, in, 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 a, in another way. Um, so um, this means also the discuss more in my opinion. Um, I'm quite afraid of and development in the, the public and political discussion where the arguments of the other side are not heard. Um, we have a quite aggressive atmosphere in a lot of the social media discussions or public discussions. Um, it's, um, if you are not in, um, of my opinion, so um, you are populist or whatever. Um, so I think um, we really have to hear first the argument of the other, then to discuss, try to find a common solution. And if this is not possible, to let it stand as far as it's within the rule of law. I mean, with, uh, out of the rule of law, it's clear you have to act, uh, but maybe also with penalty system and the penalty law. Um, and this is quite important to do so, to do it um, quickly and not um, too late. Uh, but within the frame of rule of law, within the um, freedom of opinion, um, you have to discuss more before um, really um, going against an aggressive way um, the, the other uh, partners you are discussing with. Well, specifically, someone has asked in our Facebook chat, um, do you have plans how to defend democracy specifically in Poland and Hungary, which are the you know, poster boards for this at the moment? Yes, on um, a uh, different level. First, we have to uh, intensify, I think, the exchange on the civil uh, uh, level. 
So, um, I mean, this is a Polish, this is a Hungarian government, which was elected and can be uh, can also be changed uh, in elections towards a new government. So this is a democracy, uh, but we have to see that they are driving uh, in a in a direction we cannot um, only look at, but we have to react. So we have to um, have closer relationships uh, with those citizens in discussion because yes, there is a majority, but it's not uh, one hundred percent. So we have to try to discuss to convince. And in the same time, we have to um, foster our mechanisms also in the European Union, because the rule of law uh, mechanism we have for the moment is a political one. It's ending up with a decision in the Council. And as we see, so n n there is no decision taken uh, because of political questions. I think we should install a new mechanism, which is totally independent. So I want to depoliticize these mechanisms because this political um, game we see um, also being accused by a political decision and not by a court's decision, by an in independent body uh, in, within a rule of law procedure um, is also part of not accepting such decisions. And so we should take it out of any political body as a council, as a uh, commission, uh, giving it in a procedure which is a, a totally independent rule of law procedure of an independent body. Uh, and I wishing um, to have really uh, um, uh, evaluation of the situation in all member states regularly so that we get a report on this and that with this report you can also go um, earlier in prevention of development and not wait at the end that a political decision it will never be taken because there is always one or two friends in the council uh, which will uh, hinder um, that this decision is taken. And then we have also to see that the budget has this um, rule of law clause so that money is only spent uh, in, in those countries and projects which are 100% um, firm uh, on the base of rule of law. Okay, well, now let's move back to a question I've just been sitting there for a while and I've been meaning to get to it because it's an area I'm very interested in, which is digitalization. Um, and Robert Denham has asked, how far should public sector invest in new technologies, particularly as part of this recovery plan? Hmm. I hope that we will get uh, even a higher sum from this, what is foreseen for the moment in the MFF and in the recovery for digitalization. Uh, but it's clear only public money will not be enough. And this is an important uh, point. If we want to attract private money for this, for digital infrastructure, but also for development and others, then we should have to show that we really want to get forward so that we have ambition on innovation in the digitalization. So um, public sector, can do a lot of this, for example, digitalization of the government and administration uh, uh, sector. Uh, we saw in the pandemic, this, this is really, um, that there is a way um, to optimize uh, in that, um, but this can only be a, a kickstart. You have to take in account that uh, private money is only invested if there is security for those investments, if there is a vision where this Europe wants to go, uh, and a common ambition um, to go there. And I think um, that we have to show. Um, but there, this is one of the points where I uh, have the impression we are on the way. Um, for free Democrats, um, we are calling for this for years, but we are quite happy that now um, the situation is like a boost uh, for digitalization because we saw in the pandemic how important it is. And I think we will see further steps quite quicker than in the past time. Well, Janet Berridge has made the point that going back to the pre-virus normal is not helpful. She says it's crucial that the EU27 can agree on how people can change their lifestyle. So Deutsche Bahn, for example, is proposing huge investment in green travel, but there's still too many cars in the roads. So how can we encourage more solidarity on this issue across the EU? Um, she says, Brexit has made it pretty obvious that going it alone is not feasible. Uh, so, yeah, can you talk about some of these new, like climate change aspirations and 
the changes that we saw in our lives, like home working and so on. I mean, how do we foster a, a, a future where we hang on to the good things, if, if we can say that, about the pandemic? Yes, I think the important point is to show up um, that um, these developments, especially uh, for um, um, to um, fight against climate change, um, to protect our environment, um, that we will develop it in a manner which is not against jobs, which is not against growth, but it's for quality growth. Um, so that to show um, that we can foster jobs, for example, new for jobs, for example, uh, with those technologies. Uh, but this means also that we cannot, um, that we should not develop it as a burden which come extra on the crisis. I mean, uh, there are a lot of fears now because we see insolvencies of enterprises, lose of jobs, and this will continue. And so we have really to be sensitive on the point not to hire the burden by more and more um, regulation, but to, to show up how technologies can help to sell products which are better for us all in common, to have a new way of mobility. For example, so people can mobile, can be mobile, but in the same time um, doing something uh, against climate change, for example, uh, and um, all the, the development we saw, for example, that we are really rethinking the, the way we work. So is it really necessary to get come together with 30 people from all over the world or is it possible to do it in a in a conference in a video conference as we are doing it for the moment and how often we we share i mean we will find something in the middle uh, i i think that sometimes it's necessary to be really on the same spot but sometimes you can use digitalization um to 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 work and um to um um, not use uh, a plane, a car, um, or a train. Uh, and so just to take this in account, to rethink our way of life, uh, but not, uh, but to develop a possibility that people really can decide on their own, but with the responsibility and the background, what is best um, for our environment and also for our society. Um, um, I think this could be one of the developments out of this crisis, uh, which are really uh, giving a new quality. Okay, several people have, uh, have sort of touched on the same point here about EU own resources, so we're not dependent on national governments. Can you tackle that? Yes, uh, but I'm not a fan of EU new own resources, because if you translate these nice words of own resources, uh, what is meant now are EU taxes. And this in a situation where people really struggling with the problems and consequences of the crisis. So these job losses, the insolvencies and all that, um, we um, are on the spot to tax more, especially those people who have to work out uh, for, for um, the recovery. Uh, and I'm not uh, believing that if we have coming um, additional European taxes, but then some of the taxes in the member states will be deleted. I mean, if there, this would be a switch, could speak about it. Um, and so we really have to look um, behind the proposition which I make. For example, we uh, uh, are fostering for a common corporate um, tax base. Um, this considerably tax base. This is important to have a fair taxation all over in the in the member states of Europe. Um, but um, if you only invent new taxes uh, as additional burden, uh, then there is once the door open, um, and uh, uh, when the door is open, um, everybody has the creativity to invent new taxes for another topic. Uh, and this will be a, a additional burden. Um, so I really hope we are more going for uh, market mechanism as for example, the emission trade. Um, this, uh, a, a wider emission trade, this could be uh, a, a source for uh, own resources, which is also helping environmental questions, for example, but which is market driven. So it fosters 
um, the the responsible decision of citizens in in the countries, uh, but not inventing new taxes on other sports. I mean, what about taxes on companies, for example, the so-called digital tax, or you know, mm. it's not necessarily on on individuals or, or people or, who are in yeah. in poverty. <laughs> yeah, but the problem is that these taxes will not stop with the enterprises. I mean, it will go further in the products and the services enterprises are providing. Uh, and um, the problem is that um, you have then not the same level playing field uh, internationally seen. Uh, of course, um, we have to have a fair tax system. And I think we should concentrate on that, um, that uh, the big companies also pay the taxes um, if they have their uh, success here in Europe. Uh, with European citizens uh, as consumers, uh, then they have, uh, they should have have also tax to pay within Europe. Uh, and I, so I, I wouldn't focus on a special sector, um, but I would just focus this question. And this is one of the questions why we are looking um, on these um, co um, consolidated corporate tax base, uh, because then it's clear um, that you have to pay taxes in a special system, um, but we uh, should be very um, sensitive going forward, especially with the digital tax, also because this is a trade question. Uh, we already saw the reaction of the US on the French tax uh, and French government going backwards uh, because of these problems, uh, which is made for international trade with the US. Uh, and so we should uh, better find an initial international common solution um, than a single solution in Europe. Okay, well, Hamish Norbuk has asked, how do you see EU participation in international development over the next few years? I suppose perhaps in relation to the, um, the, the sustainability goals, sustainable development goals. Uh, this is a port, uh, point where we can really uh, help uh, not only third countries, uh, but um, the whole global society. I mean, we have uh, better technologies, uh, for example, than the African countries. Um, we should change our work together with those states, uh, not only giving money and um, having some schools uh, uh, help and so on, but really to make um, them um, possible uh, to develop own business models. Um, for example, in the energy question, um, African continent could be with um, European technology and European money, um, some of one of the providers. So this can be a business model for them, creating own growth, quality growth, creating own jobs, and not depending uh, on international or European money to feed their people. So uh, make them, uh, give them the, the, the opportunity to come out with their own um, new structures, uh, but uh, it's clearly that investing as Europeans uh, with uh, European technology and European uh, money uh, in those projects uh, is uh, really uh, uh, something we, we should do uh, because it's um, also better um, each euro invested there. It uh, has a better uh, progress and a bigger progress uh, for environment uh, than the last 2% we can ma maybe gain uh, in Europe. And how do you see something like uh, the, the Chinese system, the Belt and Road uh, projects to, to sort of spread influence? I mean, do you see that as part of uh, Europe's answer? Is this, a, is this to try and balance uh, other interests in, 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 in Africa, if you like, or in other parts of the world where we might need to invest for these sustainable development goals? Uh, we see with the Chinese strategy of one belt, one road, and now also on the maritime um, sector, um, that they are really uh, strategically um, following their own interests. Um, so all those investments we see uh, on our uh, on the forehand for Chinese um, um, interests and not really for the African people. Um, and so we have um, to come up with our own um, Africa plan or also in other regions um, of the world, um, because there you see this um, uh, competition of systems. Um, so I'm really calling European Union to go in this work together, all in common. So 
so not to have 70, um, 27, sorry, 27 small budgets, because every member state has a cooperation plan for uh, Africa, for example, but really to bundle also on this point resources, um, to go in um, in partnerships, so for me, these are partnerships and not depending countries to help them to become stronger and uh, uh, also an international player in, in economics and other points. Uh, but in the same time, using um, these new growths, we will see them there uh, for tackling environmental questions, uh, social questions, um, so that we will build it up um, in, in a better way. Uh, but in a way which is in the hand of the African people. Uh, um, so um, empowering them and not only give uh, a new dependency with European money instead of Chinese one. Okay, well, uh, we're almost at the end of our time. So a final question to you then is, what would you like to, if you had one wish for the German presidency, <laughs> what would you like to be able to say had been achieved by the 31st of December? Only one wish because I have a, <laughs> a lot of them. Um, maybe let me take it like this, that we will have a really modern uh, um, common uh, um, MFF, so budget for the next seven years, but with a vision uh, for the next uh, 30 um, or 40 years. And this vision comes together with a good conference of the future of Europe. Um, so that we can also change um, the structures and institutions to be stronger um, out of the crisis than we went in. Okay, thank you very much. I think we're going to wrap it up there because we've tackled an awful lot of questions and I see there are still some more coming <laughs> in, but I know you have other commitments and we can't keep you here all day trying to deal with everything that comes up. But uh, thank you all very much. Thank you to the attendees uh, and for all of your questions. And of course, do follow along line on social media, keep the conversation going. Just this one hour is not the end of it. And I will hopefully talk to everyone again soon. And uh, thank you once again, Nicola, and indeed Thomas for helping to organize today. Thank you, Jonathan.